everyone. I am having my usual fruit platter. We've got some cantaloupe, Greek yogurt with some hemp seeds and goji berries. That has been my favorite combination these days. Growing up, I was never like that stoked about eating al fresco. It was just like, okay, cool, we're outside and there's more flies everywhere. But now, as I'm getting older, I'm realizing just eating outside is so much more peaceful. I don't need the TV running. Like I can hear myself think. I am really aging myself. <laughs> When I'm outside eating, I feel like I'm really, really enjoying my flavors. I'm taking my time. I'm enjoying the food. And I've been eating my breakfast outside more because Ben got us this lovely patio set for our sixth year anniversary. It's small enough to fit in our little deck and it's perfect. It's just been incredibly enjoyable and it just tucks in so nicely. I definitely do not take this for granted. Mm. So I wanted to address my relationship with my Apple Watch because y'all have been with me through this journey. You guys saw me when I first got it in March and now it's August and my thoughts about it have changed. The reason why I got my Apple Watch was because I just wanted to be more active. I wanted to have more data on how often I move and I love keeping track of things and so I thought the Apple Watch would be perfect. I feel like I'm definitely an all or nothing person. I tend to get very obsessed with things. It's a good thing because I'm super consistent, but it could also come to my detriment when I'm focusing on the wrong thing. I became obsessed with filling out these three rings on the Apple Watch. The red ring that you must complete is your move slash calories that you need to burn. The green ring is how many minutes you exercised. And then the blue ring is how many hours you've stood. You don't need to be standing the entire hour, but they want you to just kind of move your body around at least a little bit for each hour. So when I first got my Apple Watch, I put my move goal to a very ambitious goal. The first week I was doing pretty good with it, but I know I noticed that like I actually had to physically be super active to constantly hit that goal. So towards the end of the day, if I still had like a hundred calories left I had to burn, I would just like start doing air squats in the middle of the living room. And Ben used to make fun of me for it. Um, and now I can see why, because it's actually ridiculous. So the green exercise ring, as long as you like go on a walk for 30 minutes or if you get your heart rate up at a certain level, it starts tracking that as exercise time. I started to work out every single day and it felt good. However, on days where I didn't exercise, I couldn't help but feel guilty. I felt like a failure. I felt like I didn't make my goal. I was just like punishing myself mentally for not doing this like arbitrary goal that this fucking watch told me to do. It makes no sense. And then last there is the blue ring, which is just a standing ring. Every hour it would buzz and tell you off if you didn't stand up for long enough. And the problem with this is it would take me out of the zone. I would be working on a project or I would be even reading and then this would vibrate and it'll tell me like, hey, stand up. And then I'll just walk around aimlessly and this would cause me to snack. As the months went on, I started to define if a day was a good day or a bad day, depending on if I filled out these goddamn circles. These rings were controlling my life or correction. I let these rings control my life. And I think it hit because during when COVID-19 was first starting to happen, there was just a lot of uncertainty in the world. And there is still a lot of insecurity now, but we, have been able to kind of wrap our heads around it a little bit better. But I think since I was adjusting to a new lifestyle change and just the world felt crumbling, I felt like as long as I made these goals on my Apple Watch that everything would be okay. It's very bizarre. So the longest streak I've had with completing all three rings was 28 days. and. Even, even keeping that goal up, I didn't feel good. I was the heaviest I was, and I felt like I wasn't really getting much work done. I felt like the Apple Watch was just interrupting my flow. I knew I wanted to have some parameters around this because this is a beautiful piece of technology. It's, it's amazing what it actually does. It tracks your heart rate, it tracks your, your steps. You can like text people back, you can call people back. It's, it's, it's incredible, but I just felt like it was 
integrating too much into my life. So in July, I created this new boundary for myself and that was to only use this watch when I decide to exercise, which, it, which I've dialed back to like three to five times a week. And if I just feel like it, if I'm going on a walk or something, I'll put it on. Or if I'm going to the grocery store, I'll put it on because I do like having the reminder section on here. So yeah, that has been my experience with the Apple Watch. Um, it's something that I'm glad I have, but it's not something that I am like constantly wearing anymore because it just wasn't working for me. I'm about to make my fries in the air fryer. And this is necessary. So what I did is I chopped up a potato and I put it in ice water for 30 minutes. And now I've just like laid it out on this towel so they can individually dry. This process takes a lot of babying, but I swear to God, the fries are so good. Oh my God, it's gonna be worth it guys. Delicious. perfectly cooked. They look golden brown. Mm, the ice bath, it seems excessive, but it's totally necessary because I guess it gets rid of some of the starch and then it drains it so that way it can be even crispier. For my entree, I've got this gorgeous wrap. It's kind of like a Mediterranean vibe and this is exactly what I wanted to have with fries. And then Ben's having the same thing. All right, let's have a bite. Wait. So today is one of those rare days where I'm actually getting ready. I just applied my foundation and concealer. I can't believe it's already time for the rare Globals book club discussion again. We just finished the book, The Plaza. This book is essentially the history of the Plaza Hotel, which is one of the most famous hotels in America. It's been around for a very, very long time. And I actually had the pleasure of staying there one time. I think it was a couple years ago for Fashion Week. And it was a very, very grand hotel, I must say. It's also the hotel that, um, that was in Home Alone. Macaulay Culkin was in this hotel. And so it's just got a lot of character history. And uh, now I know a lot about this hotel. Like I probably could give out some tours outside of the plaza. I would be that person with like pamphlets being like, would you like a tour? I don't know if I would recommend this book. It's uh, interesting. It was only interesting to me because I actually stayed there and I had like, I enjoyed my afternoon tea there in the Rose Room. But yeah, I think if I, if I didn't have any experience at this hotel, I don't know if I would have been able to finish it. It's just a little bit dry and there's no like plot line that really sticks because the guests are constantly going in and out. So it's just like little moments of people that have stayed there and lived there. It's also intriguing to see how symbols of wealth have relatively remained unchanged. Like dogs are still a point of status, clothes, where you live. And even the plaza is still like considered one of the more bougie hotels in New York. So for today's book club discussion, the dress code is Please come with your cocktail of choice and dress in your bougiest hotel outfit. Think glitz and glamour fabulousness. I'm, I think I'm off to a good start because I'm using a very bougie cream bronzer. This is by Chanel. I do this right after my foundation and then I just set everything with a powder. By the way, so many of you guys have been so nice about my music choices and my videos lately, and I want to thank you guys so much. And also, shout out to Thematic, Epidemic Sound for being my main sources for all my music and my vlogs. I've been just taking more time to listen to music and doing more of a, a deep search on what music I can use and music that I listen to like recreationally. I actually do monthly Spotify playlists and I've been very consistent with that. We've started in January. I've had a playlist every single month. If you guys are interested in listening to the playlist, I will leave a link to my Spotify account in the description box. Go check it out. Oh my gosh, wait. I'm, I wanted to do like a 1920s look. 
I have a feeling 1920s flapper makeup is like all like, it's like black, black eyeliner. Look, look at this. That's not what my eyes look like right now. Okay, I think we can make this like more heavy. Before I went to the next step, I wanted to do a little shout out to Urban Decay's Lash Freak. It's very rare for me to find mascaras that I find effective on my little lashes, but this wand is so clutch. If you look at how it kind of scoops in like a little gentle C, it is perfect for my lashes. And also this little tip out here, like the spiky end, it's also great for getting in the bottom lashes as well. It may not look like a lot to you, but it's like a huge difference for me because it gives me length, but without the clump too. Like look, there's actually no clumps. Crazy. I swear to God, these book club discussions are pretty much the only reason why I dress up. I look, I look emo as fuck. I know just the thing that can make this more 20s. A beauty mark. Should I make it more exaggerated? Can you see it? Can you see it? I think this is where the outfit comes into play. This little scoop curl makes the biggest difference. Happy with that. Um, you have to guess yeah. what era my makeup and hair is. <laughs> <laughs> Flapper, 20s. <gasps> Did you hear that, folks? She nailed it. Okay, amazing. I nailed it? Yeah! All right, guys, this is the finished outfit. I feel like I just came out of like a silent movie, guys. I actually wore this exact same outfit in a photo shoot, but I just plopped it onto my body now. I feel like the hair and the makeup just completely transforms this look. This matching set is by Eggy, and I just feel like this faux fur collar just makes it more luxe. I just feel expensive, you know, especially when I go like this. I'm about to check in to the Plaza Hotel. Where is the bell man? Who is getting my bags? Where is my cigarette? I decided to accessorize with these pearl earrings. These are called the Legacy. This is with my capsule collection by eight other reasons. I do realize I sound like a freaking walking ad for the things that I created, but I can't help that a lot of the stuff that I own is stuff that I created, okay? If I'm not gonna wear it, who is? So that's enough chit chat. Let's go make a cocktail. So this is the champagne flute we'll be making our cocktail in. It looks pretty art deco. It's got all these straight lines. It's nice and sleek. And uh, I think this will make anything that I put in it absolutely gorgeous. So for today's cocktail, I'll be using Miami cocktail. This is their grapefruit and hibiscus Paloma spritz. This is so good. It's only 4.2% alcohol. It's like a equivalent of like a weak beer. So let's pour that in. Oh my God, it looks so nice. Oh, don't go over. Oh my God, this looks so pretty. I can't, oh my God. You can really smell the grapefruit. If you want to get drunk, but you don't like the taste of alcohol, this is the drink for you. Since I didn't have much of this Paloma left, I have a Topo Chico to just keep topping it up. It just elongates the experience. Hello. Wow. No, this is a, so this is a sample. My friend has a boutique. Where's your toy? I ordered some more loungewear because you know, 
spending a lot of time at home and I still want to express myself. This matching set is by the brand Plush and I got it on Revolve. I am obsessed with this set. They were pretty much sold out of all sizes except for medium. And I was like, whatever, let's go for it. And I am so, so thankful that I got a medium because it is so, so nice and loose. I really like the drawstring on this. So I just cinched it as far as I can. And I really like how the top is baggy as well. Oh, the print is extremely Californian. Like it's got all these palm leaves. It's in this lovely pink color. Makes me match with my water bottle. Coordination is key. It also has pockets. So when I take Jiki on a walk, I can have my house keys and also her poo bags here. She's a clean girl now. Normally she gets extra hyper after her bath, but she's like relatively chill. <laughs> what? What's going on, huh? It is about time that I do my nails. They're looking a little bit crusted dusty. They're ready for a fresh coat. Now I've been doing this orange and red combo for a couple of weeks now, I've been really digging how this looks. I feel like it's super easy to do and it has like a spontaneous whimsical effect. The polishes that I'm using are these ones by Chanel Beauty. They were so lovely enough to gift me this along with the bronzer. This kind of like cool tone blue, bluish red. This one is called Sailor. And then for the orange creamsicle vibe, this one is called Cruise. Super nautical. I am just going to do the same, the same design. I don't want to use my brain. I don't want to get creative right now. This is the time for me to just shut off, do something nice for myself and relax. This is the time where I catch up on all my YouTube videos. Right now I'm watching Wally TV. I feel very lucky in the sense that a lot of my friends are on YouTube. So if I'm missing them, I could just pop on a video and I can see what they're up to. Very voyeuristic. I've learned that with this polish, it works best when you do three coats. So I just bought this microphone. This was recommended by Soy. This is a microphone for your iPhone. It's all about the sound. Like a video can be beautiful, crispy, and clear. But if the audio sucks, pff, I, I cannot watch that. But on the other hand, if it's like this blurry ass video, but the audio is clear, then I can still, I, I think I'd be able to still tune in. It's like a case by case situation, but overall I love audio. Wow, oh my God, look at that. That is fancy. We've got this thing in case there's wind. And because iPhone is hella annoying with their headphone jacks, I had to get an adapter. I wonder if this will just like up my Instagram story game. I mean, the audio isn't bad on the iPhone. It's like pretty good actually, but there are some moments where it just doesn't seem as clear as it could be. Especially when I do in the kitchen series with Ben. All right, now what? I'm doing a test on this audio. This is actually a mic. Let's see what it sounds like. This audio, this is actually a mic. Let's see what it sounds like. <laughs> I think I just bought something that is completely unnecessary. Oh my goodness. <laughs> 